the future, you know, it's an opportunity for um, access to, to certain skills and certain trades and it doesn't discriminate. It's not just a job, it's, it's like a way of life and it's a passion and it's shared through everybody. I've been a dreamer from a young age. I think you can get there if you've got the right people around you. When the riots happened, I realised that there was like a generation of kids that basically felt that they didn't have a future in this country. And I was talking to my friend Nye and she told me about Andrew Curtis and the hair project. This guy had this initial idea, which was to set up a hair academy, teaching these kids to an exceptional standing. You know, so I thought, well, I should meet this guy. Wow, I'm going to start on my lady's hair and I'm going to get her to stand up for me. Yeah? Why don't we get her to stand up? Why do you think I'll get her to stand up? The hair's too long for the chair. Yeah. I don't get a straight enough angle as well. So yeah, the hair project, um, me and Paul chatted and um, we was just really mortified really by the training. And I knew as well, being that student from the Kansas State, that there wasn't really locally to train unless I went and trained in the West End. The hair project came about in 2010. There was a massive skills gap between what was available free within the hairdressing industry to the standard um, that was available privately. It was hard going, you know. We must have been crazy. If I think about it, and I always, because I'm a bit of a football nut, we built a stadium, then we got the qualification, and it was right, right, let's go out there and get a student. We started off with a small class of apprentices that the guys picked up from salons and off the back of their reputation, more and more students came to us. On day one, they work on real life models and I think that's the massive big factor. You're going to meet a real life person and talk to them. So many stories I've heard, you know, at colleges, three years done it, she's qualified, now here's a real person and she starts crying. Clients come to us to feel special. We've got a really powerful job, yeah? We make people hopefully look good, feel good. We've had a struggle, a big struggle. A lot of the students that we were taking on um, didn't fit the criteria for uh, the average apprenticeship. We just continued training them anyway without getting any funding until we got to a point where it was literally, okay, we can't do this any longer. When I think about it, we was really crazy and probably stupid, but I get much more satisfaction out of seeing these students grow. It's, it's quite a special thing. I used to have like a really bad anger. She's like, if someone said something, I didn't like it, I'll hit you. I'll do anything to get on their nerves. The main thing I think they work with you here is confidence, and that's one thing I actually didn't have most. So. Definitely a place I want to go, and yeah, really helped me. I actually am working in the Mayfair salon, which is a really high end luxury salon. I'm just a normal girl from East London, really. My life has changed from what I was until now, I can say I have improved. I love educating. I think a lot of people out there don't like giving people their knowledge because they're scared. I want my students to be better than me, you know, it's what keeps you going and these are the kids who are doing it. We're going to inspire kids to want to kind of have a future in any of the careers that each one teach one is going to be offering. It needs to be run by passionate individuals like Andrew. Nye was like our little angel. She'd been speaking to them. I originally introduced to the hair project because I thought it was an amazing opportunity for young people. She wanted, you know, to shoot her videos and some shots and I'd done the hair on it and offered my services. She said the difference between my initial idea and what he's actually doing is that he's a trained hairdresser and he set up a, a hair academy to teach underprivileged kids how to cut hair to an exceptional standard. Ben did a TEDx talk and off the back of the TEDx talk decided that he was going to help the hair project personally and basically without that there would be no hair project. He came down and each one teach one was born and uh, the rest is history really, yeah, so it's amazing. That's what we're hoping to do with all the organisations we're working with, Hair Project being one of them, the proper Hair Academy. And we want to try and do it in, in loads of different kind of fields of careers, but we can't do that unless, you know, we've got the individuals like Curtis that are running them. 
and also young people like you that are telling us whether or not the course is the good. Yeah. I think with you guys, you've got opportunities to go somewhere in life. In my industry, it seems that everybody's, it's all about the top end, you know, and all, all the lovely stuff, you know, being British hairdressers of the year, but not with the students. We've got people that have been through eight, nine pupil referral units, they've not been to school since they were 12 years old, and now they're working in top West End salons, and they're holding down jobs, they're bringing in a wage, they've grown confidence, they've just got a whole new skill set, not just hairdressing, people skills. To be involved with, you know, artists and get, get their stuff on TV and to just get that self-fulfillment. See a shoot going on, see it being put together. It gets the kids engaged, they feel part of something. It's just by nurturing them and, and being there. I think there's certain people, um, and when you all come together, you can do really special things, and it doesn't happen often. But when it does, big things can happen and um, the ripple effects of what each one to each one helping the hair projects has had um, has been outstanding. At the moment with each one to each one we're just focusing on East London. We want to kind of make the, the organisations we've got here a success. There's colleges with massive big budgets of 30 odd million that they get yearly. They haven't got facilities like this. Something like the Hair Project in Manchester, I think would have even more of a profound effect. I think eventually I want to go um, to another country with it. Because I think if you've got something you can go anywhere with, why would you stay here? Wherever the Hair Project leaves me, I'll be here. You know, I'll, I'll always be here to talk to the young people. It's a good feel factor business that we work in, you know, and see them buzzing. What a great factor. It's not just about getting them to get a pair of scissors and a blow dryer. Um, we support our students in every single way that we can. It's like a family.